be part of the debate. And frankly, we think the enrollment numbers help us in terms of saying, look, this is how much more money is in our health system. But you've got five key Republican leaders that all voted no on it. Yeah, including the speaker. I, I, absolutely. Uh, in, in terms of going at them again, I'm not saying it's going to be a cakewalk, but I will tell you that we just, you know, we just solved a very large budget problem pretty quickly by sitting down and working across the table, and we we plan on doing the same with. What this. about the argument that you took money from the schools to balance that EO? I, I don't. I, uh, Did I mean, you do that? So the EO definitely no, right? And in the supplemental, uh, the 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 argument that we are funding K-12, I mean we're funding you know, community college, which is allowed by the Constitution. You, with school aid or with um, education dollars is perfectly legitimate to us. I mean, you're talking about helping people with middle college or getting credits when they graduate or when they're done moving into a, you know, a two-year degree. I mean, the governor's vision is to be a P20 system, and I think the more he talks about that, uh, the, the, the more people, the, the more receptive people are. So I think the, the people who want their finite pool and don't want to share um, is, is disappointing, but the, the governor's vision of a P20, I think we're on our way, and, and that helps. Well, did the K-12 people tell you, please take our money? Well, nobody ever says, please take our money, right? <laughs> All right, so why did you take, why did, you know, they would argue they're more important than that other stuff. Because um, what, what the governor has set out is a vision of P-20, right? And, and the people who have read about it, there's, there's stuff on the, on the early end, including now the third grade edu uh, reading that we're, we're pushing, the pre to three, uh, pre-K to three, excuse me, and then, and then all the way up through high school and, and two years post-high post school. And as opposed to being pockets and saying, this is our money, don't spend the money here or there, the governor's been able to develop in a system where we invest what's best for the kids and what's best for the system and best for the state. And so, I mean, keep in mind, on an ongoing basis, we think the schools uh, or the schools do get an increase so we feel strong about the investment to your traditional k-12 and we feel very strong or very good about the the pre-k to uh, to you know post-secondary do you think that's what the voters had in mind when they passed that constitutional language in 94 protecting the school aid fund is that this I mean that was before the p-20 concept was even around I mean I, that's hard for me to say what I would say is the Constitution clearly allows it right I mean and, and if someone uh, if, if someone is selling it as something different, um, uh, you know, or sold it as something different at the time, I, I mean, that's hard for me to say. I, I would say, again, the governor's been very clear. He came <coughs> out with his first budget and said, this is where we want to go. We had the debate publicly. Clearly, there were people who were, you know, not happy, but it was well within the law. And, uh, and you know, we've, we've been doing it since, and it's been working. So I, I don't think it should be a surprise to anybody. The, um, the hospitals have been pretty upset about this budget, as you know. And the administration has basically explained the changes to graduate medical education, reductions to the rural hospitals by saying, well, with the Medicaid expansion, there's a lot more money going into the hospitals now. But if you were one of the hospital people, wouldn't you think, well, that's great. We're finally getting some actual payment on some of these patients. We were getting nothing before, and now they're taking money out the other, the other end. That, what, that wasn't, this wasn't supposed to be a wash or... Right. So, I mean, we absolutely make the argument that there's more money in the system, and I think in a very positive way. It's coming in the right way. Uh, and, and the same thing, I mean, look, we have a great deal of respect for the, the hospital industry as a whole, but definitely hospitals individually and the efforts that, uh, that they, that they the, the services they provide. Uh, I mean, I think when you look at the budget, the areas where we were pulling back, uh, I mean, we talked about a provider tax for GME, which is very important. But if you ask the governor what was more important, having, having space for residents or making sure that we had primary physician rates at a higher level so they'd be able to see more people we went with primary uh, the, the physician rates and, and we think that that's good public policy and we're willing to have that debate I absolutely <coughs> admit that the hospitals are not getting everything that was there and and again in a different year we might not have proposed this but in terms of being able to balance we did have to make reductions there is still as you as you pointed out there's still more money in the system um, and the hospitals just aren't getting it in some of the, the the old ways that they'd like but they're getting system they're getting it through a way now that we think is is, is um, uh, a better way for the, the health of the system as a whole. Let me bring you back to Kyle's question on the money post May 5. Yeah. Let's assume it goes down. Are you telling us here today that you think the administration could only find $200 million to do the roads if proposal uh, one fails? What I'm saying is even in the past when we didn't have the reductions we made, you saw $285 million as, as the top GF, right? Uh, what, where we're far less concerned or interested in talking about post-May and we'll, uh, we'll have to do planning as we get closer. But again, even if you get that, the message to everybody has to be we are, we are way too short for our infrastructure. I, I understand that. But the, the, it, at the end of the day, it comes how much money you can put in for the roads. And you're thinking 285 is probably the tops. Uh, 285 is the tops you've seen. I'm not even sure. I'm not saying I think you can get the 
legislature and the executive there now uh, with the reductions. I mean, at one minute you're saying, hey, we're cutting the hospitals too much. The next minute you're saying you're transferring too much to school aid. And then the next minute you're saying, hey, you need more for roads. I mean, what the governor has come out and put out, what this plan does is it dedicates funding to roads. And, and we don't have to have the food fight in the legislature every year. And I think that that is a very good place to be. I mean, the other thing that I would jump into, and you guys showed the ad, I hadn't seen it, is, uh, I mean, the idea that investing in education in local government is special interest, right? That's a new definition of special you interest. You notice they me, didn't so. mention that in the ad. Well, yeah, I mean, they should have put a kid in the cart, right? I mean, but they, they, the guy in the suit was their, uh, you know, was, was their way of going. But I mean, I just, I mean, when you look at what this does, uh, this, there's a lot of good public policy in here, uh, most importantly for the economy and for public safety, but also just for the average voter who, who might not understand right now that money they pay at the pump <coughs> doesn't go to roads. I mean, that's something else that's fixed that shouldn't be overlooked. John, there's some, some federal lawsuits out there regarding the Affordable Care Act. Uh, how close are you guys following this, and how realistic of it? Uh, how realistic is the budget impact on these cases to Michigan? We are following it. I would tell you that in terms of the risks, um, uh, you know, the, the, the ballot initiative is far more of a risk to, to the investment than, than the, the lawsuit in terms of timing. But, uh, I, I mean, uh, the department is leading the way on policy. I think our bigger concerns are the policy <coughs> concerns. I mean, if it goes down, what happens to the people in the system? What does that mean? Um, there, there will be a cost. We'll have to figure that out. But again, that immediately goes back to the to the hospitals and the health industry and trying to and trying to work that through. I don't think we're staring at this as as purely a numbers issue right now. It's not. Uh, it will be something we have to deal with. But I think we're more concerned on the policy side. About what just happens to the people if they yeah. lose their right. Medicaid coverage. Yeah. And then yeah. what that does. And where they go. Time. And then and then and then you know, do we have a, how long do you have? Right. If it's out overnight, you know, where where are these people? And, and I mean, there's the the regardless of the ruling. I mean, we'll we'll have to deal with the ruling, whatever it is. But there could be fallout or decisions that have to follow, regardless of you know what's made. And we and we want to be ready for those variations. And the department is working. I mean, they're they're, they're going to have a plan ready before the ruling. Corrections budget. You happy with that? Yeah, I think, I mean, if for those of you that didn't see the budgets, the governor's uh, budget presentation, we're spending about the same dollar amount uh, on corrections when he came in, and we're spending over $300 million a year on liabilities that, that were inherited over, over many decades. And so, uh, I mean, we, we have a really good story to tell in corrections. And there's no fat in that budget? Uh, th there's always room for, I mean, look, we had to go in and, we had to go in and reduce this time around, and corrections was one of the areas we reduced, right? Uh, but, but there was also places we would like to invest. I mean, some of the facilities are getting old. We want to put special maintenance back in there. Uh, but overall, I would say that what the director has done there and with the, with the governor's leadership, I think is an excellent story. And it's what I plan on talking about as we go around to say, you have not seen that budget go up. Um, and you know, now we're spending three over three hundred million dollars on liability costs. I mean, that's going to pay dividends to to people coming in the future. The yeah. Senate Fiscal Agency uh, yesterday showed that revenues were up in January uh, quite a bit over expectations. How much volatility is there still in this business tax situation? And could you envision a scenario where you end up putting back some of the money that was that had to be, you know, replaced or cut? Um, based just you know yesterday alone's report. Uh, yeah, so my I mean if it's uh, I would I would strongly urge the legislature in working with them to say you know to if 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 the revenues came in purely because of tax credits, I would strongly urge that we, we come up with some sort of savings fund or place to put the money because we know it's still coming, right? I mean, kind of one of you had talked about the, uh, the, the rate at which these are being redeemed, right? I mean, they might not come this year, they're coming. If we find out that it's the ongoing, you, you know, the CIT is producing more, the sales tax is producing more, and, we look, and it looks ongoing, that's a different conversation. Um, but I would still be very defensive that we admit that there's still going to be volatility in the tax credits, and we and we don't want to say, oh, we were wrong this year, let's go spend it one time, and then next year we're off and we have to go fix it. But we hope we're at a place where our volatility is within 25, 50 million, someplace in that range on the, and the credits. So, you know, the, it's always good to see revenue up. Uh, I, I don't think anybody gets excited until you see, a, you know, a trend. And even then, I, I don't think it's something that in March, or, I mean, in, in May, when, when we do the revenue estimating, unless they're really good numbers, you, you know, you kind of wait out the year to say, okay, you know, what is missing? Is some of this coming in early? What are the things that are hard for us to predict that will we'll kind of, you know, see its way through in the normal si in the cycle? When you got this job, did you go to your dad? Yeah, oh yeah, I talked to him before I took it, absolutely. Yeah. What, uh, what did you ask him and what advice did he share? Uh, I mean, he, he, you know, one of the things that, that, you know, stuck with me, and I think, uh, you know, Tim, you know him well, so, I mean, it's kind of the, 
there's a lot of times where there's the kind of the easy way out and the and the you know and the tough way, but probably the right way. And especially when dealing with numbers and the credits, and again, the one time versus ongoing get hit. You know, I mean, maybe you don't have to do that, but some of those tough decisions that you do have to go out and explain. But it's better for the system. And and clearly, uh, you know, he always tried to you know take the right one and the tough one. And and uh, it's definitely where I would like to be. But it's always good advice and a reminder when you're getting hit by, you know, certain parties about hey, wouldn't this be easier? Corrections, right? If we didn't pay the light legacy costs, we could cut corrections by $300 million. That's fine. Then someone else is left to pay it, right? Kick the can. And the governor, I mean, the governor made that decision, but it's a very good one about, um, uh, uh, you know, about long-term benefits to the citizens and to the state. And, and once you get those legacy costs, uh, you know, either reduced or, um, or eliminated altogether, you, you know, then someone's going to be able to take that 300 and say, where do we reinvest it? He told you he didn't like the pension tax. He did tell me he didn't like the pension tax. That's correct. And you told and you told him. Uh, I told him that uh, he could go vote, and we're uh, we're uh, sorry. He told me this was clearly after the you know afterwards, and it was already on the books. Uh, but um, I mean, I, you, you told know, him to go vote for Shower. Yeah, uh, I said, that's <laughs> it, you can vote for who you'd like. But uh, but I mean, I, I think you know. I mean, he he definitely had a concern. But we for all the points that the governor went and did the pension tax, I think it makes sense. Anybody who's looked at our demographics, the state's getting older, and we and and, and uh, so far, I don't think that the pension tax has been nearly as bad. Some people are feeling it, and, and I don't want to say it's not hurting them, but overall I don't think you've seen a mass exodus of our seniors, um, and it puts us on par, not just for today, it's going to be way more important a decade from now. Good. Had enough? Yeah. No, I, I, we can keep going. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you a break. Have All a right. good weekend. Right. Okay. Thank you. Good Thanks to see everybody. you, Mr. Director. Uh,